So welcome back to the channel. We're glad to have you. And I'm joined again with my friend Renee Broach, who is the branch manager at Union Home Mortgage on West Evans Street in Florence, South Carolina. If you need to contact them, all of their contact information will be down in the description of this video. So last time we did kind of a role playing scenario of what an initial conversation with a lender will look like whenever you call them or go into their office as a walk in. Now today we're going to go a step further. So I'm going to continue to play the role of the prospective buyer. And we're going to drill down a level deeper, but I'm going to look for what my options potentially are. So Renee, thank you again for doing this. And we're glad to be here working on this. And we're going to jump right in and pick up where we left off. I talked with my wife and we'd like to get together this evening and talk a little bit more about it before we actually go forward with putting the application in. What I'd like to know so I can speak a little bit more intelligently to her when we have that conversation, if you don't mind, is what are our potential options that we have for a loan? Yeah, absolutely. So I did not think to ask you in our first conversation, are you a veteran? I am not. Okay. So there are four loan options. There are VA, USDA, FHA, and conventional. So VA, we already know you're out of because you're not a veteran. So we'll discuss the other three options and then you can chat with your wife about them. Are you guys looking in a rural area or have you started thinking about where you want to purchase? We'd like to have something close to the office, so we'd like to stay in town, preferably in the city limits. Okay. All right. The reason why I asked that question is USDA allows for no down payment, but it does require that you are in a rural area. So once you start your home buying search, if you see that what you're finding is not within the city limits and your wife finds the perfect house in the middle of nowhere Timmonsville, and it's got the picket fence and all the perfect things for all the perfect horses and cows that she's gonna probably want you to purchase, then we can come back and circle around to USDA. Okay. So for now, we're gonna table that. All right, so based off of what you believe your credit score to be, you have two options. You have FHA, which requires 3.5% down payment, and you have conventional. I believe you told me you were a first time home buyer, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So as a first time home buyer with conventional, you would be able to put down 3%. The main difference between FHA and conventional is both of them have what we call mortgage insurance. This is separate from your homeowner's insurance. Your homeowner's insurance covers your contents in case of a fire or anything hazard. The mortgage insurance protects the lender in case you default on the mortgage. With FHA, you're going to have that extra mortgage insurance payment added into your total payment every month until you sell that house. With conventional, it will fall off once you reach 20% equity in the home. The main difference between the two programs, other than that, one reason why we might advise you to go one way versus another is depending on your debt to income. What I mean by that is we look at your debts, your monthly debts, as far as credit cards, car payments, et cetera. We add to that your proposed monthly housing payment, and then we compare that to your income. And there's a certain percentage. FHA allows us to be a little bit more flexible with how much your debt to income can be, whereas conventional is more conservative. The other reason we might run into a little bit of a difference and have to go one way versus the other, conventional is stricter underwriting. So it is going to require a minimum of a 640 credit score, whereas FHA requires a 620 credit score. Conventional, because of the stricter underwriting, will often require that you have extra reserves in the bank, meaning the liquid assets that you have, let's say your proposed house payment is $1,500. Conventional may require that you have three months reserves or 1,500 times three, so 4,500 in the bank to get your approval. So once you do the application, we'll know what our options are, but those are the two main programs that it sounds like you and your wife will qualify for. And that's what we're going to be looking at when you do the application. So when you were saying that you mentioned something about some kind of down payment assistant options, could you tell me a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So South Carolina Housing is a program that is a wonderful program. It's how I bought my first house in 2003. It's a, a well-utilized program within our state. It allows for $8,000 in down payment assistance to be applied towards your down payment and or closing cost. So 
both of those options that we discussed as far as FHA and conventional are allowed to be used with South Carolina state housing. And the only thing with state housing, and I don't think we're going to run into that with you, but there is, they look at the entire household income. So if your wife is also working, but say she didn't have any credit, we would still have to get her W-2s and her tax returns because the state wants to make sure that you as a combined household don't make more than their income limits. So basically it's their way of ensuring that if you're making $200,000 a year, you shouldn't need their $8,000. That's how they view it. So they wanna make sure that this money that's available as assistance is going towards families who do need that assistance and in getting into housing. Okay, so that's encouraging. So you mentioned down payment options and it sounds like there's some programs out there that could help us out a little bit. But you also mentioned closing costs. What are we looking at there? Okay, so closing costs are our fees, the attorney fees, setting up your escrow account for your insurance and your taxes. They're typically gonna range around $5,500 to $6,000. And you could, if you pursued the South Carolina State Housing Program, they have an additional fee that would be included in those closing costs. Okay, so I didn't know some of that about the closing costs. So that sounds like a lot of money. And I don't know if we're prepared for that. We only have $1,700 in the bank and a couple thousand dollars at home. Totally get it. And that's a lot of our concern with a lot of our clients. So the other two things that I didn't mention, and these are things that you can discuss with your wife and you can also discuss with your realtor when you're ready to, to pursue this, if this is the avenue that you guys take. Sometimes the sellers will give a credit to assist in closing costs. It's not often, it's not always, but it is something that can be negotiated by your realtor. And I can certainly talk to you and your realtor. We can have a three-way conversation on the phone. You guys can come by the office. We can certainly go over what that looks like because it certainly is a way to give you some assistance. So the other option that you may want to discuss with your wife is there is the option of having a gift given to you by a family member. They can give us a gift letter and we can go over that if you get to that point, but they are able to give you the gift for the down payment and the closing cost. So certainly keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, well, you give me a lot to think about. So I'm gonna take all this information that I've taken down home to my wife and we'll discuss it and we will give you a call. So thank you again, Renee. I think this was actually really helpful. And so if you found this helpful, give the video a like, uh, we do plan to continue putting these out and kind of going down the rabbit trail of the lending industry and the lending process. And so to stay notified when those videos come out, you need to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications. And again, if you're looking to obtain a loan or you just want some more information, this is Renee Broach. I'm going to put her contact information not only on the screen, but the information for Union Home Mortgage will be down in the description. So you can reach out to them today. And also, as always, my information is down in the description of this video. And we'll look forward to hearing from you. And in the meantime, y'all take care and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.